let's talk Intel. Oh, we both hit it. Sorry about I that. I got it. The Chiron is, is live, buddy. Rock yeah. and roll. Rock and roll. So um, Int IFS, which is Intel Foundry Services, and an, an ARM announced, quote, unquote, a multi-generational agreement to enable chip designers to build low-power SOCs on 18A, uh, mobile SOCs first, but opens up the capability for auto, IoT, data center, space, and government. Hey, buddy. Yes. Do you have to run a solid? What is 18A? I'm going to go into that. 18A okay. is 18 angstrom, uh, a little bit less than 2 nanometers, but quite frankly, uh, we used to have truth in millimeters, nanometers, and angstroms. It is not actually the width uh, between um, different transistors. It is just kind of a made-up type of thing now, whether it's 5 nanometer, right? And that's why it was nice that Intel went to that. But uh, here's the backdrop to, to, to really understand what's going on here. So you have the majority of leading edge wafers are manufactured in Taiwan. You have China that's circling gunboats around Taiwan in the spirit of reunification. Uh, rumors out of DC, uh, there's a plan to blow up T TSMC fab, wafer fabs if China attacks. The result, that happened, well, all leading edge uh, chips that go into NVIDIA, AMD, Marvell, Qualcomm come to a screeching halt, and we go into a giant recession, maybe even a depression. I, I don't know. Enter Intel and its IDM 2.0 strategy. Uh, IDM 2.0 was a plan to boost its own internal manufacturing, create a foundry for the third time, uh, and by the way, they've signed up NVIDIA, MediaTek, AWS for patch packaging, and a mysterious large CSP whose name uh, will not be uttered uh, yet. But so that's the Intel strategy to come in. Perfect timing, shores up their own business, but also helps uh, solve uh, some of the geopolitical challenges uh, with the U.S. and Europe. So. Let's break this down. So first off, this is mobile first. You know, is this to not take on too much or in lower risk? But then again, mobile is the most competitive sector right now, right? What about ARM-based PC processors too? Uh, makes you think. So you have MediaTek, right? You have Apple, you have Qualcomm. But I'd love to see uh, this narrow in to talk about Apple M-series, uh, PC processors and Qualcomm, Snapdragon, Orion processors as well. The other thing I said is multi-generational. And what that means is nothing more than multiple versions of uh, ARM IP. ARM has different instruction sets and generations, but they also have different versions of IP, particularly in mobile, that they bring out on, uh, on an annual cadence. Also note, U.S. and Europe, not just U.S., uh, you have uh, Western Europe balkanizing and, and wanting its own uh, factories in, in their own regions uh, as, as well. One thing I noticed too, Daniel, kind of who was quoted, right? Uh, the level of the person being quoted is always important. And in this case, it was Intel, Intel's Pat Gelsinger and ARM's uh, Rene Haas. Uh, Rene Haas actually called Intel a critical foundry partner for our customers, which I thought was uh, was huge. So I think this is great news for both Intel and ARM. Uh, ARM wouldn't provide the resources if it didn't see a chance of IFS success with, with 18A. That's the good news. And, and ARM, uh, while I don't see ARM getting any more market share, I think they have 99% mobile market share, uh, I could see this as an opportunity in the PC space with Apple and Qualcomm if they are in fact fabbing here to gain PC market share. So that's it, big announcement. Yeah, and well, 99% sounds like a lot of market share. Uh, we can <laughs> expect the market to get bigger. And that is another opportunity that obviously as mobile continues to expand and the opportunities for mobile, you mentioned PC for instance, well, mobile compute is changing. So ARMS, per, uh, you know, potential participation in the PC market is going to grow substantially. And so I think it's a good alignment for Intel too. You know, Intel has to be thinking about hedging. 
uh, for a long time. It was, you know, deeply rooted in x86 or nothing uh, or die. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen what happens when you start to see shifts, uh, behaviors away from one uh, particular process or, or architecture to another. And the foundry strategy of Intel to be able to to, to manufacture chips for ARM or Risk Five um, is obviously something that the company can hedge on if you know market share dwindles in any part or x86 architecture loses momentum in certain uh, key markets, they're able to continue to to monetize that strategy. Um, so I think you know I think it's smart on Intel's part to be aligned and be diversified. And so with the company making huge bets and huge investments on manufacturing in the US and in other allied nations, as the uh, Asia risk continues to heighten, despite not much conversation about this, um, they are well positioned, if something was to happen, to be the de facto, because there's really no one else to pick up the slack there. So um, I think there's a lot more partnerships with ARM too. I think ARM will continue to be thinking about alignment. The company is in the middle of trying to take, trying to go public. It's going to be important that the market sees how they are going to align and compete and how they're going to participate in the ecosystems. And so I've been impressed with Rene Haas as, as the leader of ARM. Um, and this was a, a partnership, like you said, that clearly is uh, gaining attention at the very top of the organization with the with both of the number one leaders of the companies uh, participating. So while it's a little technical in nature, it's a big moment. Note it, pay attention to it, watch it. This should be something good. So yeah, so this uh, fills in a lot of the blanks too around the original announcement a couple of years ago, supporting different instruction sets, including x86, ARM, and RISC-V. 